What the hell is going on in Virginia? They're facing some pretty onerous gun confiscation laws. Okay, and it looks like they will pass. Now, I've had some TMPers contact me. They're very concerned. They live in the state. They've asked me to do a CTA video. I've contemplated it. This is an exception. I will rarely, rarely, if ever again, make a video like this because, well, because of what I talked about in the previous video, why we will lose our guns posted right before this one on the B channel. Check that one out, please. From start to finish, there is some solid logic, I think, presented in that video. I talk about value, apathy, low participation rates in TMP. Can I really make a difference? The answers haven't changed, but it has been weighing on me. It has been weighing on me. Virginia, Virginia, Virginia. And I think what is going on in Virginia is a blueprint of what will go on through the entire United States sooner or later. I've always said that. The short answer of what is going on in Virginia, Old Dominion, a former state of mine, by the way, I used to live there when I was a kid, went bear hunting there, had my first girlfriend there, drove my first car there. Yeah, I know the state, but what's going on there are Democrats. That's the problem. The leftists have the reins of power and they are following through with what they said they would do. And that is to take your AR-15s, to take your guns. Now in years past, they played a little game, little you know shell game of, oh, we don't want this, we don't want that. Don't worry, we're not coming for your guns. The gloves are off now. They have been for a while. They have flat out said, we will confiscate. You are the problem. Not mass shooters, but you are. And now they are threatening the good people of Virginia with a felony if they fail to comply if this law is passed. Uh, five years in jail, you know, up to five years in jail. They're threatening law enforcement officers who do not enforce this of losing their jobs and also having charges slapped on them. They're also threatening the involvement of National Guard troops. That's what they're threatening. Now let's all take a deep breath. Ready? Let's do it together. <sighs> Just relax. Okay. There's a lot of threats being thrown around. You have to understand that threats are not action. What we are in right now as gun owners, and I hope it stays this way. Actually, I really do is a cold war. We're in a cold war. So there's lots of threats. There's lots of posturing. You know, mostly from the left. I really don't see any threats at all coming from the right, from gun owners. I don't. They, I just see the don't tread on me concept being stated. Like, leave me alone. Can you just leave me alone? I'm not bothering anybody. You know, I'm a, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I go to work every day. I make this country run. Just leave me the hell alone is what gun owners are saying, and rightfully so. But the threats are coming from the left, and they're like, nope, nope, you're the problem. This is what we're going to do. We're going to come however we have to do it. We're going to take your guns. We'll throw you in jail. We'll put you in an internment camp. Okay, I haven't heard that last part, but they would love to. Trust me. This is rare. Like I said, this is rare that I will do this and make a CTA on anything anymore for all the reasons stated in that video. But like I'm saying here and doing here, I will make an exception just because it's weighing on me. And it is, again, a blueprint of what is going on. Now, if they haven't already awoken already, <clears throat> the gun owners in the great state of Virginia need to uh, pull their head out of their ass. From what I understand, they have, and I think they are mobilizing in great numbers. And by the way, when I say gun owners, I'm not talking about tactical gun owners. I'm talking about anyone everyone from every walk of life, from every sexual orientation of every race, banding together as one group to defend your constitutional rights to own guns. If you own a single shot rifle, you're a gun owner. If you own a single shot shotgun, you're a gun owner. If you're a duck hunter, gun owner. Competitor, gun owner. All of them need to band together completely unified to fight what is going on in Virginia and what is going to come to your state sooner or later. It's important. 
stay in the NRA. Just like I said in the previous video, I will stay by that. If you don't like that, quit watching the video right now. You can just stop. Save me any rant. That is the largest organization that can forestall this state to state. Imperfect, yes. Go watch the last video. I had a huge rant on that. Not going to do it here. And state organizations can do a lot of good. Now, I did some research. They did not hit me up for this, and I don't want anyone ever to hit me up for a CTA. I don't want it. I don't want any email. Hey, you need to do a CTA on this. I hate it. I don't. It's up to me if and when I do it. It's up to me if and when I participate in anything. I'm so busy and up to my neck in reviews. It's hard to get oxygen sometimes, but occasionally I will. And here I go. So they did not hit me up for this. And the organization is called Virginia Citizens Defense League. Their website is www.vcdl.org. I'll put links below. And I'm very impressed of what I know about that organization. I'm going to read a prepared statement they have because I wish to give it publicity. In doing so, I also want every state to have an organization like this, ready to mobilize, ready to lobby on the, states, on the steps of their state capitol building, as these guys will do, and take the political fight on the offensive. Okay, the days of us just sitting back, writing a couple letters, they're done. We're outnumbered. I made that clear in the last video, why we will lose our guns. We are outnumbered, 100 to one. I mean, it is outrageous how outfunded and how numbered we are. And in the great state of Virginia right now, you can guarantee there are millions of dollars coming into that state from anti-gun organizations, or as I like to call them, anti-self-defense organizations. Soros, no doubt, is part of that. So you have millions of dollars coming into that state doing whatever they need to do with that money. Advertisements, you know, greasing the palms of, of politicians. That is going on in Virginia. It's been going on all the time, but I guarantee you in Virginia, that's going on. And that's what we're up against. So outnumbered, outfunded, you just got to be a warrior. You have to be a political warrior. And it appears to me that's what VCDL is doing. And that's why, again unsolicited, I'm going to read what came off their website tonight. Here we go. And then I may throw a couple thoughts in before we end. Now, I don't know who wrote this. It might be the dude in charge of VCDL, but it's well written. I like it. He goes, Northam has declared war on Virginia's gun owners, CHP holders, open carriers, hunters, target shooters, spo sport shooters, collectors, and competitors. All of us. That was my point I just made. If, you're, if you own any type of gun, if you've inherited it, you should be a member of VCDL. You should be a member of NRA. Be a member of GOA too. I love GOA. I'm, I'm for all these organizations, anything that can help us forestall what's coming down our way. Northern wants to strip, strip us of our right for self-defense and is even looking at confiscating guns. So be it. But we are very much in the fight, he says. As the dust cloud has been settling from election day, my optimism that we can derail a lot of Northern's agenda has been growing steadily. Admiral Yamamoto, after bombing Pearl Harbor in 1941, famously said, I fear that all we have done is to awaken a sleeping giant and fill him with a terrible resolve. Great quote. Great quote. And I hope that's true. And like I mentioned earlier, there are gun owners that are pulling their head out of their ass finally and going, oh my gosh, I could be a felon for owning one AR-15. Or it's not even AR-15s, as I understand the law, it can be a semi-automatic semi rifle that can accept a detachable magazine with all these evil features, uh, anything. It, and I'm not even going to go into the litany of how the law is written because I don't care. All it is, it's written as a minefield, a minefield that a gun owner would have to navigate and no doubt trip up on. So it's onerous, it's ridiculous. Uh, here I am going to one of my mini rants. I know you guys love my rants, but it does not promote public safety. Okay, if you're really worried about public safety, address drowning in pools, address, address car accidents, address obesity levels, address opioid addictions. Are we making real progress in those? No. Barely talked about. No one mentions them. But, you know, you lose a couple people a year. Oh, that's a national emergency. 
It's not about guns. It's not about public safety. It is about stripping you of weaponry so they can control you. I've always said that. You go back to my CTA's post in 2008, 2009, 2010, 2012. That is a consistent message. It is about people control. Sorry for the rant. I'm continuing here. Great quote from Admiral Yamamoto. Yes, that is exactly what Pearl Harbor did. And that's exactly what shoving gun control down our throats will do too. Exclamation point. We are tired of so-called compromises. They always involve us giving up our rights and we getting and us getting absolutely nothing in return. That's not a compromise. That's stupid, he writes. Virginia gun owners are model citizens, with CHP holders being the most law-abiding of the law-abiding. We are fed up with being punished and pushed around every time some lunatic shoots up another gun-free zone. I have a video on that. I have multiple videos on that. Gun-free death pay. Go look up that video. Or some gangbanger kills a bunch of other criminals. We have no more patience for being abused and we will not cede an inch without a fight. I like the sentiment. I got to tell you, I like it. There's no such thing as common sense gun control. In reality, gun control is a black hole that sucks common sense and our liberties into oblivion. It hits poor minorities and women the hardest. It ultimately affects all good people. Criminals can get their hands slapped and released to continue their acts of mayhem with illegally owned firearms. And he gives some links to that. Absolutely. So criminals by the left are coddled. They're let go. They are apologized to, and usually it's the victim that's the bad person. So in the, the world of the left, in the world of the Democrat, right is wrong and wrong is right. Have you noticed that? So the good guys are the bad guys and the bad guys are the good guys. It's a topsy-turvy world we live in. And now Virginian citizens, and maybe someday, hopefully not soon to your state, you will also find yourself in the same predicament these poor guys are finding themselves in. A government that doesn't want its citizens to be able to protect themselves clearly has an ulterior motive for wanting a disarmed populace. Just go ask nothing fancy about that. He ranted over the years about that. We dare not turn, we dare not turn over our guns to such a government, ever. He writes, it's time to organize and create a machine that will fight back wherever gun control rears its head. We can put a major dent in Northam's plans if we begin preparing and organizing now before the new General Assembly is sworn in early January. Let me stop right there and tell you what I really love about this guy who wrote this and the organization is that they are getting it and they are keeping the focus on political action and that numbers, 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 pissed off numbers is what counts, that you get 20,000 gun owners rolling into the Capitol steps in Virginia, just pissed with their signs and getting in their face. It might just give those legislators pause of what they may be facing if this gun pass, or I'm sorry, if this law passes. It's political. He's not threatening anything. He's just saying we need to be politically active. Now, if it passes, what will happen? Maybe I'll talk to that at the end. I like that he calls it a machine. A machine is something that is, uh, well, it's mechanical and it can't be stopped. It's kind of robotic and it just goes and it chugs and it, it just kind of, I don't know, tears down obstacles. I love the idea of a machine. We can put a major dent in Northam's plans if we've been preparing. Oh, I said that. Here's what we need to do. Our alerts will be going out on these items soon. Strong gun owner activism in Democratic, sorry, Democratic districts. Democrat legislators in some of the more gun areas of the state, Virginia, voted gun owners uh, voted gun owners with impunity over the last four years because they knew the Republican ma majority would never let gun control bills become law. Thus, their bad votes wouldn't actually change the status quo and probably wouldn't wake up and anger gun owners in their district. With the new Democrat majority, so they do have a Democratic majority now, look out, Virginia. Look out, because when that happens, the stops are getting pulled. They will, own, they will own any gun control measure that gets passed for the next two years. Gun owners living in such districts need to be extremely active. Reach out to other gun owners in the district to get them involved. 
get them on a VA alert, that's a Virginia alert, and have them join VCDL. Contact your Democrat senator and or delegate and keep the pressure on them to steer clear of all gun control. Here we go with letters again. I'm not ever going to say letters don't count. I will say that the leftists, if they see that or think you're a gun owner, they will, they are more likely to blow it off. But if 2,000 letters come in in one day, what they do understand are votes. And they understand that, okay, uh, I hate these guys, but uh, I'm getting a lot of pressure. And if I want to get reelected, I'm going to have to vote against gun control. That's what he's saying here. So keep up the letter writing campaigns, even though they may be a Democratic legis legislator who basically hate us. Just being honest. Gun owners living in such districts need to be extremely active. I told him that. Go to their office and meet in person. Some anti-gun Democrats have actually told our members that they have never met with anyone who opposes their anti-gun voting, exclamation point. If enough gun owners do this, it will get their attention. Same concept that I was just talking about. So what they're worried about is re-election, staying in power. If they get the vibe, they're going to lose elections. Maybe, just maybe, they start paying attention. Contact your Democrat legislators whenever VCDL requests you to do so. Let there be no doubt, you can play an absolutely crucial role in slowing down, moderating, and stopping major parts of Northam's, that's a governor, agenda by putting pressure on your Democratic legislators. Watch teams for local governments. See, I like this. I see organization with VCDL. I like that. It's uh, organized and they have a plan, a machine. Well done. For each locality in Virginia, we need a team consisting of one or more local members to watch everything that the Board of Supervisors or City Council is doing. So they call these WTLGs. Hmm, huh, I'm not the only one doing acronyms. Watch teams for local governments. The WTLGs are looking for anything that affects firearms in any way, including hunting restrictions, and keep VCDL informed of what is planned or occurring so we can react. So what they have is a mechanism to alert their members and they can generate a lot of people showing up and just applying political pressure. Thumbs up from nothing fancy. If we lose Virginia's preemption law, the WTLGs will be a crucial in, or I'm sorry, critical in the effort to block local gun control. Okay, now I'm gonna to continue to read this. It's gonna take me just a couple more minutes to get through it. Trust me, I'm gonna to get to um, sanctuary counties I'm going to talk about that and give you my opinion on that and what I foresee. It's just an opinion. I don't know if it's correct or not, uh, what may happen and transpire in the future, not just in Virginia, but everywhere. Liaison teams for local governments. Here's another organization that, make sure I get their name right, Virginia Citizens Defense League is doing. I love it. LTLGs, for localities that have some gun-friendly supervisors or city councils, we need to be able to interface with them. The purpose is to get inside track information on any proposed gun control or hunting restrictions, as well as to work with them to implement pro-gun ordinances or resolutions. For example, making the locality a Second Amendment sanctuary, here you go, against unconstitutional gun control laws or lowering CHP fees. So those are a liaison teams for local government. I like how he's acknowledging that not all legislators are against <clears throat> gun ownership that actually you will probably find throughout Virginia and every state, there are quite a few that are completely behind the Second Amendment. And there might be some that can really aid whatever you're trying to do. In this case, maybe make a sanctuary and maybe exempt a certain geographical area from some ass, sorry, some, uh, I was gonna say asinine. We'll go there, some asinine law. Liaison teams for our law enforcement, LTLEs. LTLEs will interface with local sheriffs or chiefs of police who are supportive of gun owners and are willing to stand with us in preserving our rights. So there's another micro group within the organization and they are focused on working with pro Second Amendment uh, law enforcement officers, of which there are a lot. And they're usually found in the sheriff's departments, but they could also be found in a police department. Can they come forward and say they feel that way? I don't know, but it would be cool to have people within the police department that are sympathetic to your cause that can give you intelligence, right? They, they can tell you what's going on, what's being organized. Intelligence is key to know what's going on. Be smart, be tactful, be friendly, be professional, 
and establish these contacts because they can serve your purposes very well. LTLEs, when an appropriate time comes, we will be looking for chief law enforcement officers who would be willing to speak with one voice with gun owners at the General Assembly. We would also want to be looking for chief law enforcement officers who would be willing to make their jurisdiction a Second Amendment sanctuary against any gun control that is unconstitutional. No law enforcement officer is required to enforce or should enforce an unconstitutional law. <laughs> Clap from nothing fancy. Everybody watching this should be clapping too. That's exactly right. So I've been sworn uh, to uphold the Constitution. Now, I, when, I, when I got released in the military, they go, hey, by the way, that oath you took, it's done. You're good. Any, most law enforcement officers do that as well. Did you know that? They raise their right hand. They swear to uphold and defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. So if an officer chooses not to enforce what he or she thinks is an unconstitutional law, they are abiding by their oath. Okay, God is on your side. <laughs> okay, forget government. God is on your side because you are upholding natural law. I have a video on that too. Continuing on, I like that part too. More volunteers at the VCDL table at gun shows, festivals, and other events. Just this weekend in Richmond, there were, there were gun owners who approached the VCD, VCDL table and had no clue about how precariously their rights are hanging after the election. This is what I'm talking about. I just ranted about this in the previous video about how apathetic head up ass so many gun owners are. They just don't pay attention. If you own a, own a gun, do one of two things, either become extremely politically active or just sell it. Everything, sell all your ammo, sell your guns. That's what I'll eventually do anyhow. I'm sure you will as well. Just get rid of it, it's not worth hassle. But while I have it, I'm gonna be politically active. Here he's saying that in, they're at a gun show and they're like, what, our rights are at risk? When did this happen? On your watch, bro. That's when it happened. Holy freak. I kid you not, he says, we must educate our fellow gun owners on the threat that we now face. Do not assume they know what you know. I've been ranting about that. Advanced litigation prepar preparation in case we have to use the courts to stop unconstitutional gun laws. VCDL and its attorneys are developing contingency plans. A huge, here's the crux of this message. Oh, and by the way, I just donated a hundred bucks to the VCDL. Just did it. I'm like, I like what I'm reading. I want to support those guys. I hope you throw them a few bucks too. It's, I love what's going on. Is this the genesis of, uh, I don't know, MCW, modern, modern Civil War in the United States? I doubt it. Again, take a deep breather. Relax. No, it's not. But it is a bad precedent. And these guys are on the forefront. And these anti-gun, anti-self-defense organizations, again, are laser being focused on Virginia. Because this is going to be a test bed for them. Can we do this? This is our fantasy to take this stuff away. Well, most of the stuff. This one. Take it away. That's our fantasy. And they're going to see if it works. And if it is, do you think they're going to be emboldened? Do you think they're going to come to your state? Do you think they're going to find more donors and more millions of dollars and influence more politicians to do this same type of crap? Like I said, we're just, we're, we're fighting a, um, a defensive battle, I feel, but we got to fight. What's our alternative? Just roll over and give up. Now here's the crux of what VCDL is talking about. All Virginian gun owners and human rights activists. Okay. I added that last part, but I think it's appropriate. You know, if you're for human rights, you should be for private gun ownership. Okay. All right. I just added that part, but all Virginian gun owners and human rights activists should attend a huge lobby day. I like that term instead of rally on January 20th, 2020 meet at 8 AM at the general assembly building in Richmond, Virginia. Speakers are lined up to speak from 11 AM to noon is what this says. They will be announced later. He says this time the rally will be in an excellent picturesque location on the steps of the Capitol instead of in the basement of the state Capitol building. I made that part up too. He said it was on in the field by the bell tower. 
in the basement. Sorry, just a little bit of levity. Some heavy stuff we're talking about here. Okay, I did see on their website they are providing bus rides to um, all these folks to get to that assembly area, the lobby day at the general assembly area. So I think they're just charging 35 bucks. Just jump on the bus. It'll be a great chance to net network with other gun owners, exchange uh, addresses, phone numbers in case you need to use them later. Just saying, just saying. And transportation is key too. If everyone drives a car, having attended some very busy rallies, it's such a pain. Finding parking, you have to walk two miles to the area, it's a joke. It's better to go with high density transportation options like, options like a bus. Now, when we attended a rally in Salt Lake City, Utah, I found out that Lyft, that's right, Lyft was giving free rides to all the anti-gunners. That's one reason why so many showed up. Free transportation, available, convenient transportation. Make it easy to attend the rallies. We need numbers, 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 numbers. Then he writes, more Second Amendment sanctuaries are coming. VCDL has already been approached by several localities which want to become Second Amendment sanctuaries. He didn't put an acronym on that one, so. There we go. One less acronym to remember. We expect this trend to continue. VCDL has given them some guidance and I expect to see announcements of such sanctuaries starting in January. Patience please, as VCDL is dealing with a flood of incoming information and requests. I am personally getting over 700 emails a day as I write this and I have a thousand unread ones. I can relate by the way. Plus phone calls, texts, Facebook contacts, as well as, as well as doing radio interviews and speaking at meetings. Please bear with me and the organization as we slog through the flood of information and requests. The other board members and some of our executive members are doing their very best to take up the slack. VCDL, uh, VCDL PAC is compiling some useful information to help with upcoming fights in the General Assembly. Then he says, do not listen to defeatists. This is exactly what our opponents want us to do. Be fearless, stand strong, united with our, your fellow gun owners, and be ready to fight back when the time comes. To join VCDL, click here. Again, I'll put a link below. And that's that. There you go. So well written, well organized, some great ideas contained therein. It's a peaceful political effort, and I fully support it. That is just outstanding. Now, sanctuary counties, I like the idea. I won't put a number here in the video because it is constantly changing, but there are a lot of counties in Virginia, a majority that are promising not to enforce this law if it passes. Again, a clap, thank you. Oh, and by the way, I made a video on that in 2013 after the Sandy Hook shooting. Go watch that video. I talked about pro-constitutional sheriff departments, I gave them big kudos and I said, this is actually the future. And what do you know, six years later, we are in the future I talked about in 2013 and here it is again. The good sheriffs of the United States of America upholding the constitution now in the state of Virginia. Sanctuary counties. Sanctuary, sanctuary, hmm, that sounds familiar. Oh, that's right, it comes from the left. It was their idea. Sanctuary cities, we refuse to enforce immigration law. Okay, cool. We can play that game too. Uh, okay, we'll just have a sanctuary county, not just a city. And I think it will stick. I really do. If a sanctuary county, let's say it just goes through, this passes, sanctuary counties really dig their, their heels in and they say, no, 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 we're not going to enforce this. Expect a huge legal battle. Again, millions of dollars will flow in. Uh, will it go beyond that? That's the big question. And I know a lot of people are talking about this online. Will it go into violence? And that is a big concern of mine. I'm always pro-peace, anti-violence whenever, ever possible. I've always said, delay, delay, delay. I don't like the idea of anything ever going violent. I've always been consistent in that message. But if the state of Virginia goes through with this and they start implementing what they say and promise they will implement, and that is turning it good people into criminals. And I'm talking like, hardworking people, tradesmen, law enforcement officers, both current and former, military members, both current and former, construction workers, teachers, nurses, doctors, people who work in stores, delivery men, mailmen, UPS drivers, and they're gonna turn all those guys into criminals. I think the case can be made 
that that state is declaring war on its own citizens. Is it even debatable? So they're just saying, don't tread on me. Leave me the hell alone. I ain't bothering nobody. I'm not a mass shooter. But if they come knocking on people's doors and they come trying to put that person in jail for something that should be legal by the Constitution of this United States, I, just talking to people, I'm not advocating anything, but just talking to people on the phone, speaking through messages, it could get very ugly. Very ugly. My viewers said with an 87% certainty, they will not comply with a universal registration. And this would go along that. And I, I said in the previous video, let's just knock that down to 70%. So 70% of Virginian gun owners go, yeah, I'm not registering anything. I have places to put my stuff. I'll put it there. And that's what's going to happen. Yeah, you may get, I don't know, Virginia, if you go through this, maybe you get 10% compliance. And of God, the left just doesn't learn that gun laws don't work. Anyone can get a gun anytime, anywhere for a few bucks. And if they can't, they can make one. It's just ridiculous. It's just absurdity. So sanctuary counties, I'm all for it. Um, could it be the genesis of something bigger happening where you have kind of a civil war thing kick off? I don't know. I don't know. I hope the good sheriffs in Virginia and the good sheriffs everywhere stick to their guns, literally. And if they have to, they can apply a posse cumitatis principle where they just deputize people. The rights of the people to be conservators of peace, usually under the authority of an elected sheriff, posse cumitatis. In that respect, it also has to play with the military that they will not be used against their own citizens. But the posse cumitatis also involves a sheriff acting as the arbiter of freedom. And he can deputize anybody he wants. He goes, deputy, 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 deputy. And next thing you know, you have 500 deputies armed in that county. Do you really want to go up against that force? What if they bring in the National Guard? Raise your hand if you're in the National Guard. 11 years, retired Lieutenant Colonel. Raise your hand if you had discussions. If a law like this ever came down, if you would obey or disobey, had those conversations. I said, there ain't no way I'm obeying that. And most of my guys in that conversation said the same thing, like, yeah, we're not obeying that. Keep in mind, those National Guardsmen and women are Virginian citizens. You know, would you want to obey that law? Hey, you got to go and run some gun confiscations through this neighborhood, or you got to go against this sanctuary county in an arm, they're an armed insurrection you need to go put down. So get in the tank, go on, get in your H64 Apache and start doing your biz. Is that really going to happen? I highly doubt it. I just don't see it happening. You know, uh, could things escalate and this, this starts and one thing leads to another? Yeah, it could. I hope again that it's always peaceful. It stays in Cold War arena, political, political, political. I've always said that. I don't want anyone to get hurt, but I'm telling you what I've been hearing is that for, and people in Virginia I've talked to is that they are not going to put up with this. I'm telling you the state of Virginia and I'm just passing the message. You're like, hey, if this passes, we ain't giving up. So they're going to use every political measure necessary. And if it comes to whatever it comes to, they're ready. That's what I'm hearing. So I, I don't know why the left doesn't wake up the Democrats, because we are talking about Democrats. And if you're a Democrat and a gun owner, holy cow, I just don't get that. Not in today's age. I don't get it. Democrats with guns, you know, either sell your guns or change parties says me. By the way, I've always said that my whole video posted years ago said that I don't get it. Maybe in the 60s, 70s, on into the 80s, maybe the 90s, I could kind of get it. There were some good Democrats that were pro gun that voted pro gun. And maybe they were liberal on some other issues. A OK, but they were solidly, reliably pro gun. I don't know of any like that anymore. Their party is the party of disarmament. It is their platform. And by belonging to that party, you're advocating disarmament from the good people, for instance, in Virginia, criminalizing them, taking their guns away, throwing them in jail for five years, slapping them with a felony or worse, 
killing them in the confiscation routine, whatever that happens to be. I say it would be more incidental, not door to door. I just don't see door to door happening. I don't. It's just too painful for them, too costly. You know, it's just not going to work. It'll be incidental. But still, if, by being a Democrat, you're supporting that. There you go. I, I don't apologize for that. I don't. I don't. I just, you know, I'm a freedom loving guy. I just, common sense guy, it doesn't make sense to me. And that's what's going on in Virginia. I always believe, by the way, that we have the government we deserve as an entire people. So for whatever reason, Virginians have elected Democrats. They've handed over the reins of power to the Dems, the leftists, knowing what they know. I mean, it's been very clear this year and the years leading up to this of what they stand for. And they elected them. So by and large, whether you're talking a local, state, or national government, the people get the government they deserve. And guess who goes along for the ride? You and I, because we didn't vote for them. We fought politically to prevent this. We knew what was coming. We tried to prevent it and we failed for the reasons, again, I mentioned in the previous video, why we will lose our guns. Go watch that. I'm not gonna say it all here. It's, it totally plays what's going on in Virginia. And what shocks me is there's people, conservative guys, that for years have told me in TMP, well, let's just get it on. You know, I'm not going to vote for anybody. I just say, let's go, let's go, let's bring civil war. I'm all for it. And I've always said, you're an idiot. You do not know what you are talking about. You do not know what that means. It's much better to handle it peacefully at the ballot box. You are high if you think that's the route to go. And I've always said that. And now you hear, now you see Virginia, what is, I don't know, possible. What could happen in Virginia? And that's what these guys have advocated. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. Let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and uh, start that off. Oh my gosh. I've always fought against that. Politically active, vcdl.org, like that, nra.org, goa.org, like that. Absolutely. Hey, if, by the way, I have a lot of TMPers who are law enforcement officers. I love them. I love them. I love them. They're great guys and gals. Don't enforce this. Just walk away. Walk away. Resign if you have to. Don't enforce it. And you're, you're going to be asked to make some hard decisions. And I've said that in some QTN episodes. I like You need to think it through. If you're going to be a cop, whatever type of law enforcement, federal, state, uh, local, think it through. You're, you are going to be tasked to do these things. And you're going to have to make some hard choices. And what I'm hearing is that most, I don't, I shouldn't say most, but a, lo a large group of police officers in Virginia are just like, eh, I ain't doing this. I ain't doing it. When you, we already know where the sheriffs stand there. Thank you. Thank you. Just walk away. This, I'm sorry. It sucks. It really does. I wish I could change it, but don't do it. Don't be on that side. You don't want to be on the side of history of that you stripped guns away from Americans. What the hell? Is that where you want to stand in the you know, the passages of history of this great nation. Yeah, I stood with those guys. <laughs> now, we're on this earth for such a short time. Make your time count. Be an honorable person. For crying out loud, make your name stand for something. Hey, Joe Smith, he was a cop. He just walked out. He stood up. He's like, yeah, I'm out of here. Here's my badge. Like Dirty Harry, he just freaking walked. That's what you got to do. I hope it doesn't get ugly. I really do. I hope this can be handled peacefully politically and that this bill can be defeated. I do have my doubts. I'm just saying uh, for the reasons I said in the past video, I know I keep saying that, but so true, but I'm in the fight. Rare, rare. I will ever come in front of the camera like this because of value participation levels. So don't ask, please don't ask, don't ask. Oh, you need to come to this rally. No, uh, -uh. I'm busy. I'm maxed. You need to speak here. Nope. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't, but it'll be my decision. You know, I'm just saying, it's just the way it is. Um, I wish VCDL the best of luck, Virginia. It is up to you. It's your state, it's your government that you guys allowed to be elected. It's your fight. Do what VCDL is, is doing. So just stay organized, politically active, and honestly on the offensive. Offensive, 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 and dudes, numbers count. Nothing fancy, signing off from the bunker. Thank you very much.